Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. Uh, Hello. Welcome to Academy Live. We are on episode 11, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 11. Uh, and uh, today's episode is going to be really, really nerdy. Uh, so it's a nerd alert. Uh, we are going to talk about reflections. In uh, a nerdy way. Yes. All nerdy aspects of reflections will be the topic of today. Yeah. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, hellos. We have hello from uh, Gotland. We have a bonjour from Antoine. We have, uh, I think, hey from uh, Norway. We have Ariel and Juan, Frank, Jan, Gianni, Eric, Raul, Luke, Timmy, Jessica, Maria. Hello, everybody. It's hello. Great, great to have you here. Uh, we have had some uh, uh, summer holiday, uh, some vacation. Uh, and been working and so we have been had a little bit of a break uh, in the a academy line but now we're back and we have uh, tons of interesting things we're going to talk about for the rest of this fall uh, we will also go to photokina for at least one or two episodes yeah and uh, we will i think we will broadcast directly live from there that would be so cool yeah that would be cool yeah if, if the Wi-Fi allows. If yeah. the Wi-Fi allows and if we find find uh, any fun stuff to point out that's interesting. Maybe we yeah. could do like a... My, now I am... I am um, <coughs> Improvising, that's when I get worried. Saying too much, <laughs> yes. Uh, that it, it would be so cool if we d could do like some uh, reportage. Uh, oh, yeah, like... A, like yeah, yeah. Uh, so Small. let's do that. Let's walk around and uh, and see what, what's offered in uh, Furukina yeah. and, and kind of the, pick out the highlights that we like. Exactly. Uh, Our highlights. Yeah, and not only from pro photos, of course. We will uh, check out a lot of other things as well that we think are cool. Uh, light related. Or maybe not. Or maybe something that you can eat. It, was, it could be anything, absolutely. But it will be, uh, we'll make something fun and uh, hopefully educating as well. Yes. Since the purpose of this is uh, to twofold. Educate, yeah. yeah. It's twofold. Uh, we, we want you to, of course, have fun while you're watching this. Uh, and uh, that's why we kind of goof up every now and then and make some mistakes because we all do mistakes, we're human, uh, but also to educate uh, as a part of the whole Profoto Academy uh, where you have uh, tons of good courses on the Profoto.com where you can learn a lot from the master himself as well. Uh, and, uh, uh, but also give you this opportunity to interact live with us. Exactly and ask what questions. I was I hoping they were aiming at that yeah. because the interaction with you guys are the most fun part. Yes. Question question and still uh, make even more questions that is so fun to interact with you live here and we get uh, oh we got more we have Sheila here as well and thank you Thailand uh, I would not even try to uh, uh, pronounce your name but thank you for confirming that the, uh, the sound is good we really like that thank you uh, and then what else? We have Kent here, Denise, Miguel and Fernando. He really likes us to be back. Well, so do we. We really enjoy that you, Fernando, are back here with us as well. Um, so, uh, is there anything else uh, that we want to cover before we jump into this crazy world of reflections? Well, I could actually point out that you were in Botswana. That's correct. Yes. That is nothing. That's something you don't do like every day. No, that was not an everyday experience. That was scary and uh, uh, <laughs> scary. <laughs> it was truly scary. Uh, but we did use uh, flash. Uh, you used flash. Yeah. yeah we did used you, flash. What kind of animal did you put the flashlight on? Uh, all kinds of uh, elusive uh, night creatures. Night creatures. Yeah, and most <laughs> night creatures are dangerous and uh, bite or <laughs> tear you apart. Uh, so we had a, cu a, a couple of those incidents where I... Uh, uh, got really teared apart? No, but I got really scared. Oh, but, really scared. But yeah. we will come back uh, to the Botswana adventure mm. since we... Uh, I'm sorting out pictures, etc. And uh, uh, I'll try to get uh, Tom Svensson, who, uh, who I traveled with, uh, and who is the photographer, uh, and, uh, and have him over here as well, so we can talk and show a little bit about what he did and why he's doing what he's doing. Uh, so that will cool. be coming September, October, depends on when Profoto wants to mm -hmm. launch that. So. Cool. But I, I did the feather the light on giraffes and uh, <laughs> 
I did uh, try to put a butterfly on uh, one yep. of the giraffes. That was difficult. Actually, you, you sent me a question. How do I put a butterfly on a giraffe? Yeah, because face. it's all nose and then yes. lip directly, and it, and it, he's so high up, so yeah. it's really difficult. Yeah. But, uh, but I think you managed quite well. <laughs> it's interesting to show that image later. Yes, yeah. 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 we'll get to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway. Why do we talk about reflections? It yes. started uh, basically from me as I'm uh, learning uh, and, and I did try at one point of time to shoot some still life photography and, and that's when I ran into this whole mysterious world of reflections and I realized that this was not uh, something that I understood immediately and I thought, well, maybe David, you can help me and the others here to understand a little bit more about uh, reflections. Yes. Because uh, my understanding, there are different types of reflections. Exactly. And it's interesting that you said that you encountered this problem when you started to work with some product photography. Correct. Because often product photography is kind of all about reflections, how to shape them, how to place them, how to control reflections. Mm. So uh, I think that's a natural way to, you know, end up in, hmm, how do you do this? How do you control reflections? Yes, so, so yes. one thing that, that I was shooting a, a bottle of wine and uh, I did not manage to get this nice long uh, reflection on uh, to kind of shape the whole contour of the wine bottle. So before we are done, I want you to show me how I can do that. But that will be towards the end of this session. Okay, so I, okay. But first explain to me I'd love to explain because I, I think there is things to explain when it comes to reflections. Uh, everybody knows what a reflection is, or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's because, what I thought. Yeah, uh, because there is, there is things that are really interesting. Uh, I find it interesting, uh, but most of all, kind of important to know about reflections, how you control it. But uh, there's uh, two different kinds, two different subgroups of reflections that you control in two totally different ways. Okay. And uh, if you don't know that, then you mess will, up like yeah, I did. Then you mess yeah. up like okay. you did. Yeah. Have you seen, you know, the images for the pro photo product images? All yeah, the, 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 the black, uh, the product portraits as, as they call exactly. them. Exactly. They are, you know, all made of reflections, gradient reflections and reflections to enhance all different parts and, and, and such. And I've seen you uh, shoot those and it looks very, very interesting. So maybe that's uh, also one thing we could do, uh, visit you next time you shoot yeah. uh, a, a product portrait and, and have a live around that and you can explain a little bit on what, what, what's happening and why yeah. it looks like it does. Actually, the last time we did that, we ordered a pizza from a new place, you know, we have to eat. Yeah. And it was the, my life's most disgusting pizza ever. <laughs> so when I think of this new product we shoot, I, it for me it's like, oh, it was so much cheese on that pizza. <laughs> but, uh, but now we know that I will never order pizza from that place again. And I will show you reflections in, uh, in a real, real environment. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. you say that there are two different types of reflections. There is two different types of reflections. I say that. And with this, I would like to use my hands to show you. <coughs> uh, when light hits you, boom, then it reflects. Yes. And it creates color and it creates reflections. And both color and reflections are actually reflections. Both are reflections. So if there were no light, I mean, clearly there would be no color. <laughs> uh, but what you're saying is that the light hitting me and reflecting is what actually creates the color of my skin or yeah. beard and so forth. Yes, okay. and, and the two different kinds of reflections are what's called surface reflections. That is light that is hitting the surface, the, the, uh, the limit between the air and the first uh, atoms, yeah. electrons of your skin. That's, the f that's where surface reflections occur. And then we have the subsurface reflections. That is light that's going into your skin and bump around uh, amongst the molecules and, and reflects out again. Okay. That is the color. Maybe I can uh, draw. Why I have don't this you? Uh, pen and I can draw this so maybe so it will come a bit more clear. Let's see if we can switch over to. And yeah, does it work? I do a star. Yeah, it works. Cool. So, two different kinds of reflections. This is a surface, okay? Yes. <coughs> And then we have light, and I will change 
my pen color to red, green, and blue. But first red. Here comes light is actually a mix of different spectral colors, right? We have red, green, and blue, for example. When you mix red, green, and blue, what color do you get when you add them up? Anders? White. Yes, then you get white. So here we have the sun, perhaps, shining on a surface. What will happen here is that uh, the blue light might go in, and you see that there is a small refraction, there's a shift in the angle. Yes. That always happens when light goes through another material, if that material has more or less density. So that is refraction. So the light goes into the material, it's a bit refracted. I switch over to green again. Uh, let's go for the red one. The red one goes here. Burp. And when it comes into the material, this, speci this specific material, let's say it's a cucumber. Okay. Uh, this specific material absorb all the red light. It just turns into heat. He likes the red. So I now switch over to the blue one again, and all the blue light turns into heat. The cucumber loves blue and red. It turns into heat and the cucumber becomes a bit more warm. Yes. But the green light, mm. the green wave length, I switch over to green, also goes in, but it's not absorbed. It's bouncing around amongst the molecules and out again and hits Anders' eye. Mm. And that is why the cucumber is green. Cucumber. The cucumber is green because the red and the blue light is absorbed, turning to heat, and the green is bounced inside and then out again. Ah. So if you don't have any green light in the beginning, then your cucumber will not be green. It will be gray. Gray. Okay, so if you have a completely dark controlled environment and you only hit it with blue light, there will be no uh, green cucumber. Exactly. So the cucumber doesn't change the color to green. The cucumber reflects the color because it hates green. Cucumbers hate green and love blue and, 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 and uh, red. So and as a punishment, it, it, the, the cucumber that hates green becomes green. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I just want to, want to point out that, of course, the, the colors that is white light isn't uh, from the sun. It isn't red, green, blue. It is all spectral colors. This is just a simplification of, of the concept. Yes. But it's still the same thing going on. If you light a cucumber with a red, green, and blue light, you will have this effect. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, so this is called, I will change the color because this is important. I will change the color to, let's see, uh, what's purple. the purple? Yeah. This is called a subsurface because it's below the surface. Subsurface reflection. And that's what gives the color of different objects. And like, uh, exactly. And since the light is uh, reflected out of the material in a different angle, it's a random angle out of the cucumber or whatever, uh, the light will be diffused. Diffused meaning that it will go out in all directions. Exactly. The light will spread out in 180 degrees. There okay. is no there is no um, parallel rays out of a cucumber. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but it is um, green. So that's why it's, it's equally green and it's a kind of, there's no light shining out of it, it just okay. looks diffused. Okay. Exactly. So, uh, so all, as soon as you see a surface with a color, that color is diffused light. 100% diffused light. All, uh, it's also called a Lambertian, uh, um, Surface. Surface, yeah. exactly. So that is one kind. I will write number one because we have another kind of reflection. And this is the one I had problems with. Yes, so I s go to mm. a new page to show you the second kind. 
that is the kind of reflection that we mostly use to shape when shooting product photography and others. I do a new surface. Let's say that this is a cucumber too. Yes. And we have the light uh, in... Okay, I do it properly in all three colors again. We have the red, we have the green, and we have the blue. Blue. Did I change to blue? Yeah. Blue. When it hits the surface, this light, actually this uh, light happens at the same time as the subsurface reflection. These two always occur at the same time. Okay. But they behave differently. So what will happen here is that all wavelengths, all colors, will reflect in the same angle as it entered the, the surface of the cucumber. So what color will you see of this surface reflection? If I get all three, it would be white. Exactly. So this is the specular, um, the specular reflections that you see, the white light. And the white reflections are, are uh, th they, uh, the reflection have the same shape as the light source. Ah, okay, so the shape of the light source is the specular reflection on a surface. Exactly, so if you have a light source that is shaped as a cow... That's a very nice cow. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, <laughs> so if your light source is shaped like a cow, then you will see the reflection, the, a mirrored cow as the reflection. So. Yeah. The, the, the shape of the light source is mirrored in the reflections. Okay, so that's why uh, it's good to have different types of shapes and forms of the light source if you want to control the reflection. That is the basic uh, um, theory behind how to shape your, your surface reflections. That is by changing the shape of your light source. Okay, and, and, and so... I type this down, reflection. Okay. So, okay, so this is reflection number two. And these two reflections, number one and number two, always occur. And it's up and it's a, it, it, it is up to the surface or, or the chemical structure of the material that, de that uh, uh, depicts the amount of surface versus subsurface reflections. That is nothing you can change with your, with your light sources. You can't make something more shiny by using a shiny light source, or you can't make. So, if I have, for example, the, the discussion, if I have a, a white umbrella or a silver umbrella or a white beauty dish and a silver beauty dish, they will give the same type of reflection if they have the same size. Yes, they will. They will give you the same uh, amount of the, the same uh, ratio between yeah. subsurface and surface reflection. Yeah. This, the, uh, some people uh, uh, think that if you have a silver one, you get a different type of reflection. Exactly. I think that is kind of uh, uh, the natural way to think. If you have a silver umbrella, you will get more, s more reflections. Yeah. But what will happen is that you will get stronger reflections. Light because because be stronger light because you have more photons hitting you. Yeah, because it's collecting. The silver one collects the photons and sh shoots it more straightforward. It gives you a little bit of extra punch and yeah. more photons going straight yeah. forward. So it's brighter and if your but if your silver umbrella has the exactly the same shape as the white umbrella, mm. your reflections will be exactly the same. The amount of reflections isn't caused by the material. Yeah. And I think that many people believe that, but that isn't true. But what will happen when you have a silver umbrella, it uh, it, it is that the uh, the light, the shape of the light source probably isn't even like a white umbrella. Exactly. It's probably, you know, it has patches of light. Yeah. And each patch is a small uh, light source, which will create small, smaller uh, reflections mm. that will be more visible. So the micro contrast will be higher. And that's why you think you have more reflections. Uh, so we have one question the green light is scattering or diffused in the first diagram reflection these type of product mostly uh, absorb the light well um, so go back to the last one here we got a question the green light is 
Gathering. gathering or diffused in the first diagram. Yeah. So so basically, what it happens, it, it bounces around under the surface. Yeah. And it then it scatters comes up. under the surface. It bounces around exactly as you say. Yeah. So here. And the probability that it will continue to to uh, reflect inside the, mo the molecules is high, and randomly some will go out again in a new direction. Yeah. And when it comes out, you have now one arrow coming out of it, but it comes out basically in all 180 degrees. Yeah. And that's why it, it becomes green. Uh, but I think, uh, why don't we go over to our little demo table where we have collected some uh, uh, interesting products, yeah. the fruits and so forth, and uh, some light sources and, and take a look at it. Uh, for that, we need to uh, turn off the lights here and uh, switch over to another camera. Uh, and, and then we'll look at different light sources and how they impact different surfaces. Yes, and while I am going to turn off the light, I will go and do that. Okay. Then you can uh, explain again which two kinds of reflections do we have. Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, you testing me? Yes. Okay, so we have two different kinds of reflections. One is the one that goes below the surface and hits all the molecules. I'm in pitch black now. <laughs> so, oh, there we go. That's a kind of cozy. Anyway, so it goes beyond the surface and bounces around or gets absorbed. And then some light will actually jump back over the surface again and out. And that will depict the color of the specific object. So if I have a, an orange, for example, that is, uh, uh, has the color of orange, which is kind of convenient considering the name. Yeah. Uh, I and, wonder why. And it would go under the surface and then come out, and it's the orange parts of the light that will bounce out and will give the color. Yeah. And, and if I put a CTO, if I use an orange filter on it, no, what should I use? A, a blue filter. If you use a CTO, if you use an orange filter, then you will have the orange light, and yeah, the orange will actually go colder since mm. all the other uh, spectral uh, waveforms mm. won't absorb because there is none. So you will actually make keep the, <laughs> the orange a bit cooler. <laughs> with <the> orange. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good way of, of calling it. Okay. Yeah. And then the other type of surface uh, reflection is the surface reflection, which is hits the surface and then comes out in the same angle as it came in. And that gives you the reflection, which you kind of almost have also on a hand or a glass or Yeah, you actually, if you look into the camera, I can point out this reflection here. The white part, that is the surface reflection. And the skin color, that is the subsurface reflection. That was a lot better explained than I did. Yeah, so I know. Okay. Well, uh, there is actually something I want to tell you. I know <laughs> that you want to go there, but yeah. I want to say one more thing. That is... <laughs> <laughs> in this, this is so cozy. Cozy, it's like a, uh, like a like a dark winter night. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that when light hits a surface, as you said, and it bounces out in the same angle, uh, what makes it what makes the 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 photons bounce out in the same Ooh, angle? No, uh, no. I, I won't go so deep, but it's interesting. Uh, actually, it is when the distance is the same for each of those photons, okay? Yes. So when you have my hand here and the light comes from this direction and hits my hand, all the positions where, where the distance from all photons are the same, they will Refle reflect the, 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 the surface, surface reflection. reflection. Exactly. Yes. And that is why if you have a parabolic shape, like a bowl, mm -hmm. then in the focal point of that, that is because it's the same distance to yes. everywhere. That is why you will have a big surface reflection. That's yeah. cool. That's, that's really cool. And we could go into quantum electrodynamic yeah. theory of Richard Feynman uh, yeah. uh, explaining on why certain percentage of the light actually reflects back when it hits glass, but let's not go there let's now. Let's not go there. That's let's go over to the table with, the, with our surfaces. Different so we leave you guys in surfaces. the dark for a short second and I switch over to this camera. And am I visible? Yes, you are. Uh, yeah. You, including uh, I don't an overexposed face uh, <laughs> and some products here. What we have here is we have an A1, we have a bottle of wine, we have uh, uh, 
an apple, we have an orange, and we have a fancy bottle of olive oil. <laughs> Uh, and then we have a light source. We have a uh, one by three with a soft grid. Yeah, one by three uh, soft grid, and then we have a D two behind it. So it's a, a halogen halogen based uh, modeling light that's giving the light. And then yes. we have one David overexposed. But now it's kind one of okay. Overexposed David. Yes, I can I can change my exposure Ooh, when doing nice. like this. Now you're dark. <laughs> now I'm dark, and now I'm better. Better. So oh, yeah. Uh, so what I was what I wanted to discuss is the surface reflections. Yes. Yes. Let's talk about surface because uh, the subsurface we can see in the uh, apple and the orange. Uh, yeah, that is the green. color. Yeah. And, and 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 you can also see about talking about the subsurface that the orange color is diffused. It's diffused light. It goes 360 degrees. It's orange everywhere. It's basically. orange <laughs> everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we skip the the subsurface because that is kind of not interesting. That is what it is. It is the color. But here we have uh, an anonymous bottle of wine. Yes. And now we see exactly the thing I had a problem with here. Yeah. That is the reflection of the light source. You can, mm -hmm. you can clearly see the, the, the soft grid on the light mm -hmm. source and the reflection is kind of small. Uh, if I move this a bit, you can see that reflection itself is kind of small, mm -hmm. and you wanted the reflection to be all the way down. So exactly, it's a, look at evenly those smooth, fancy reflection. bottle type of reflection. Uh, but here it goes only here, yeah. this part. And I had my one by three, and and I was kinda, and I also used the the grid because I like the grids because uh, they increase the contrast because in, in the shadows because they then the light doesn't hit walls and ceilings etc that will be new indirect light sources that will light up the shadows exactly so that that's why i like grids yes yeah but as you can see you can clearly see the grid in the reflection yes and that is an ugly reflection yes yes and this is a very shiny uh, object so you can see the reflection yes. okay other grid so, uh, since this object's surface is a very, very smooth surface, if I do like mm. this, I can't feel any, any structures or anything. We can clearly, that is why the, the, reflect, the, the, the shape of the reflection is like mirrored. So if I take, for example, take an uh, A1 that has a very small light source and I then you can clearly see that you have a small light source. It's just yes. a little dot, a white uh, dot. And now I have two dots. Yeah. Looking. So why is that? W because now we're into quantum uh, quantum uh, mechanics. Quant yeah. Uh, because the distance from each photon that hits the first, let's uh, see the same thing. Yeah. Uh, all the photons here have the same phase. They are in the same phase. Then they will create a surface reflection that will hit your eye. Mm -hmm. And that one is also at the same phase. Exactly. So. It doesn't have to be the shortest distance. That actually is the famous um, law of where a, refle re where, where a reflection happens to be. The shortest, dis shortest distance between the light source and your eye. What actually is going on is you will have a surface reflection when the phases are, uh, when, the, when, uh, when, they are, when the photons are in phase, yeah. when they have the same position of the, of the wave. So here we see a small light source, yep. small reflection. Small light source, small reflection. Big light source right next to it, bigger reflection. Yes. And if I put my hand in front of this one, I suppose that you can see my hand in the reflection. Yes. Yeah. It's a pure mirrored reflection, a specular, a specular reflection. And then if I, take, uh, if I take the apple, if you put that one kind of in center, let's I guess we go to the right place. Yeah. So here you can see if it's is it too overexposed or yeah, it's moving back a little bit. It actually won't do no. any difference. No. Uh, that's a shame. Is it? So maybe if I go really close. Is it not? No. You you want to try to change the exposure in camera? Can I? Yeah. Okay. I will now try to change exposure in camera. Here we go. Lower it a bit. Now you there see. We go. There we go. Now you see the reflection. If you take the the A1 and shine on it, so we can have a another. Oh, there yeah. we go. So you see the size of this reflection is yeah. bigger than on the this wine bottle. Yes. 
and that is because the structure of this surface is a bit rough. The roughness of a surface makes the surface reflection grow. So the, 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 okay, so the surface of the object will actually also control the size of the reflection. Exactly. So if I take something rough, do you have something rough made on the table? I do, I oh, do. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I have an orange. So let's see about the exposure here. Yeah, let's see now. Okay, so, well, you cannot see any small reflection from the A1. And no. that is because the surface is much more rough than the apple and the wine bottle, and the surface reflection will grow, will spread out. Yeah. And this is also what's happening on humans' skin. Reflections are, tend to spread out uh, if, the, if the skin is um, rough like this. And it's only your skin because you're so old and wrinkly. Yes, yeah. so that is why I always have such a smooth face. <laughs> okay, but then, so okay, the thing here is that, that uh, the surface also controls the size and the shape of the surface reflection. Okay, so then I have something mysterious. Okay. Uh, if, if you move the, the olive bottle uh, over here, on the, at the edge, at so the outside edge. of the, the D2, yeah. and now I shine a small light source. The A1 light source? The A1, which is only a small dot of LED, yeah. and it becomes all long. Yes. That's the effect I wanted on the wine bottle. Exactly. What happens here? This is uh, So this is actually a mix between two kinds of surfaces, horizontally and vertically. The wine bottle here has the same, yeah, so now I see only a dot. Yeah, the wine bottle is, is smooth in all directions. Mm -hmm. So this surface is smooth in one direction, in that direction. So it becomes thin. Yes, thin in that direction, but it's really, really rough in that direction. Because it's a brushed metal. Exactly. The metal is brushed like this, and that is, that, that is why uh, the reflection becomes like this. It's like an orange in this direction and a wine bottle in that direction. Okay, well that ha helps me explain. So now you get this really interesting effect where yeah, the, ref the small dot becomes so wide. Yeah, that is why metal stuff, you can actually use, um, well, br uh, brushed metal stuff. Then you mm. can actually use small light sources because you will have these long, long uh, reflections, if you want long reflections. Yeah, so, so let's now take the example of the and I, I also yes. should add that this is the same thing with the, that happens with the faces. You know, the roughness, am I visible in the screen? The, but the you're dark. I'm dark, okay. There you go, now. The roughness of the surface on this one, the roughness of the surface is exactly perfectly aligned, so the faces of the photons will, will be, they, they will be in phase on many places at the same time yes. in this direction. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so back to the wine bottle. Yeah, the wine bottle. And 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 there's a couple of things that I noticed. If you take the wine bottle and move it back and forth, closer and further away from the uh, the light source, the light source, the reflection is equally strong. That is interesting that you point that you point that out. Uh, the 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 intensity of the reflection stays the same. It doesn't matter if you are close or if you are further away. The intensity of the reflection is the same. Uh -huh. And that is, I mean, if you look at uh, my hand, my hand goes brighter yeah. and darker. But a wine bottle, it has the same intensity, yes. no, no matter the distance. But what will happen is that the size of the reflection changes because the, the light source will relatively get bigger when I go closer to the light source. Yes, so, so uh, if you, Take away the soft grid, which makes a lot of noise. I try to do it silent, <laughs> like ninja, ninja style. Taking soft grid on like a ninja, like that. Okay, and now I have. Let's see. Let's I see. go around. Now you can see that your reflection is smooth. Yeah, and uh, you don't have all the the soft grid visible in there. So if you want to make this bigger, all we need to do is to make the soft box bigger. Burp. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's see. Uh, I'm backing off. Yeah, exactly. So now I see it. Yeah. And, and, and since it reflects the 
light, the light source, I mean, is reflected in the uh, reflection. If I have a really wide light source, I will have a really wide uh, reflection. Yes, but I, w I want to point out, out that since the, the, the curvature of the object of the wine bottle is curved like this, you need a really wide. So if I turn this to make it wider horizontally, let's see what will happen to the reflection. How wide will that be? It will be wider, but now we have a lot of etiquette. Yeah, yeah a lot of labels. Labels uh, everywhere. Yeah, so, so it is see, wider, but... Yeah, since the shape of the lights uh, or, or, or the wine bottle is is curved in this direction you re you need a really wide one if you want it to be even wider and now yeah. i'm super close if i go away whoa whoa, see whoa, whoa, whoa. calm calm down i need to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you see that it it becomes smaller yeah. quite quickly and that is again when when the when the photons are in phase in other words when it is the same distance to the uh, to the softbox then you will have the surface reflection and when you have this shape that means that it's a very it's a much shorter pa shorter place where this will happen okay because they are facing away from it cool so if i want the long one i need to make uh, the light source long yep and you can do that with the different uh, sizes of light shapers so like a, a one by six etc uh, strip box or exactly. and some other ways exactly yeah. that is why uh, it's really common to have uh, large strip boxes yeah. when you make wine bottle uh, photography yeah you can of course do this by using indirect light sources you like you can shoot into a white cardboard or something white then yeah. you will it's an easier way to make long um, reflections cool. uh, one thing that's interesting uh, well, which you mentioned about the the distance the label the, the the intensity of the label if you want to make that darker you can just go further away and it will be darker because this mm -hmm. is a lot of subsurface reflection subsurface reflections go darker surface reflections stay the same so you can control the exposure just by going closer or further away but the reflection intensity will be the same, but the size will, will change. So that is also one reason why it is good to have really huge, really large uh, softboxes for things like that. Then it's really easy to have the correct exposure of, of the label, but still have really nice uh, reflections. Ah, okay, cool. So that I learned, learned uh, some there. Uh, so why don't we turn the lights on again? Uh, and uh, if you switch over to that camera, I switch over to that. I can go and turn on the lights. There we go. There we go. Now I switch over to that camera and I sit down and it's totally out of focus. So if you sit there, I will. Oh, now it's on focus. Oh, and you come you in. You can even do it here. That's ah. cool. Awesome. So, uh, so let's see if we have any uh, any questions. Do you guys have any questions regarding reflections? Uh, if we conclude it, uh, we have subsurface reflections and we have surface reflections. And subsurface reflections are color, and subsurface reflections. Uh, go darker when you put it away from the light and brighter when you put it closer uh, just like you know inverse square law and all that kind of stuff but surface reflections stay the same but go smaller since the light source is relatively smaller when you move it further away and if you want to have a long reflection on the bottle you need to have a long light source and if you have a, uh, a cow as a light source <laughs> then your reflection will look like a cow. Yes, but you can take a wine bottle and brush it horizontally. Mm. Then you can have a small light source because then your reflections will be long vertically. Cool. But I don't know if the wine bottle producer will, will mm. think that is a good thing to do. Yeah, but probably not. Theor theoretically, you can do it like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, is there anything else we, we want to cover with regards to... I think we covered uh, the key with reflections. Um, surface and subsurface reflections, uh, very important when you shoot product photography. Uh, and again, 
Actually, I, the, it's, it's, it's really important also when you shoot people. Like uh, if you have uh, a small light source, you will have small reflections. And small mm. reflections tends to look like ugly, reflect, sweaty reflections. Yeah. So if you have a big softbox, then the reflections will be bigger. And bigger reflections actually used to look nicer. And this is a really secret thing that I will now tell you guys. Are you ready? When you have a light source close to your subject, the reflections will go darker than the subsurface reflections. Subsurface reflections go brighter when you go closer, as we showed you, mm -hmm. but the surface reflections stay the same. This means that they are getting closer in intensity, oh. in other words, and then you change the exposure in camera. In other words, the reflections goes darker. So the closer you are, especially when shooting people, yeah. the you will lower the intensity of the reflections. And this is what creates that high quality of light, as some used to call it, when you have a softbox near. Now we have a couple of questions. Here. Okay. The reflection on the bottle needs a gradient to shape. What technique do you use for that? Yes. Khalil, yeah, thank yeah. you. Actually, uh, when we talked about this episode earlier today, uh, I said that shouldn't we show anything about gradients in reflections because that is actually what you want to do when you do it on you know, a higher level. Uh, but Anders said, no, let's save that because that is quite a big topic, how to create and control gradients in reflections. And yeah. I totally agree. I would love to do that now, but we don't, <laughs> we don't have the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, we, but, but we promise you, Khalid, we will come back to that. Uh, but uh, in short, it's basically shaping the light source or creating something that looks yeah, like a gradient. Exactly. But yeah. it, it's, it's still the same thing. How, so the question actually is, how do you create a light source that is a gradient? Yes. And we will come back to that and we will have a whole episode on, on gradients. Yeah. Uh, what's the best way to shoot glass and not have any reflections from Daniel here? And uh, not have any reflections? Yes. Well, then well, you won't see the glass, so you need well, reflections. Well, so or sometimes, let's say, if uh, sometimes it can actually be uh, pretty good. Let me give you an example. Da, da, da. Now we have glass and I don't want to have reflections in my glasses. Mm -hmm. That's one example where... where uh, <laughs> well, you don't want reflections. I don't want surface reflections. Yes. But have you ever seen anyone with, with glasses li like this? That he, he's, <laughs> he asked about? No, sorry. No. <laughs> he, he, well, glasses and reflections are, of course, something when you, you don't want reflections. Yeah. And there is a couple of ways to avoid that. The simplest way to do it is to... Well, at least I think it's the simplest way is to lift, I don't know the English yeah. word for, for uh, those... These uh, parts here, so, so basically... Here, you lift them up a little bit, so you yeah. get a little bit of angle on the glass. Yeah, so then the reflections will be in another position, and that solves most of the, those problems. Yeah, so but lift that up a little bit, and then you, you get less reflections. Yeah. And uh, then also, there's one, tip, one uh, type of lighting that actually also helps, if you do broad light, for example. Yeah. If you do broad light, then you won't have any reflections, because yeah. then you are angling away from from the light so the reflections won't be in camera it will be somewhere else yeah so broad light to avoid reflections in glasses but wasn't this question about this kind of glass because i have an interesting uh, tip for that. It, it could be either so let's answer both okay um so let's then talk about glass yes and you don't want to have actually there is one more way to to remove reflections in the glasses that we haven't mentioned or oh, i think khalid just did yeah yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Khalid. Let's go into the polarity here. So, if you have, if your light is polarized, and you can do that by having a polarized filter on your, your flash. Boom. And you have a polarizer on the lens. Then you can block out all reflections. So you will have zero reflections whatsoever. And your glasses will be totally free from, from reflections surface reflections because surface reflections are where the polarization is going on but the problem with that technique is that the face will look really really scary since all surface reflections disappear by using that double polarization method 
the skin will look totally matte. He will not have any reflections in the eye, nothing in the skin. He will look like he's stone dead, you know, <laughs> totally matte. It looks like crap, but it, it works. Like if you're shooting, if you're shooting uh, uh, sports glasses for product photography and you do not want any reflections at all, that is a very good technique. Yeah, so Daniel mentioned that his friends are glass blowers, and when they and, and when we shoot the the the, uh, the 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 pieces that they create, it, it gets really ugly reflections from the light. And that is because the light is ugly, probably. So I mean, the shape of the light yeah. is you have to make the shape of the light source uh, a fitting shape yeah. to um, and, and enhance to shape the reflections. Uh, I just want to point out one more thing. If you have uh, something like this, a really irregular, irregular uh, shape. This can create reflections from all over the place. Mm -hmm. You can control that a bit if you put it into water. Because water and glass re refracts the light less because they are, water is more heavy, mm. more density. Okay. So you will have less reflections from all around the room. It's easier to control. So for example, if, if you, in, like in Daniel's case, you're shooting a a, a colorful glass sculpture or you know these, have these reds and blues and some kind of statue and you want you want as few reflections in it as possible you could either lower it in a tank of water actually you can yeah right but, uh, yeah the problem is that water often is creates new other problems <laughs> yeah. like it's dirty and you need to have a tank that is per so it might not be the best way to do it but theoretically or or you can do that. You can do it in a, as in a, in a controlled room where you have as little ambient light like we have here. We have all these stripes of lights going on here. As little light as possible. Have a polarization filter on your flash and have a polarization filter on your camera. And then you only get the colors of the glass piece. Then you only see the subsurface reflections, yes. Yeah. But pro that will probably not look as glassy because you remove all the the aspect of of glass and i think mm. that I, if you are creating something made of made out of glass you don't want it to look like it's made out of cotton <laughs> yeah no and then also i mean they have, apparently they have many sides and many irre irregular shapes yeah. so it's so so actually what i w what i would do you have to have a controlled environment when you're shooting it the best way to do it is like if you have a, a black room Black studio. A yeah. black studio with your subject, with your glass piece in it. And your light source should be something big and white and even. Uh, I mean, a softbox is a good um, example of that. But if you want it even more even, you can use like a plexiglass or diffusion material of some kind and, sh and, and put the light through, um, through it. So you will have one even soft, uh, light source. Then the reflections will be big and even and soft. And then you can start to shape the reflections. Maybe you don't want to have a big light source in all directions. Maybe it's nicer if you shape it, you can put flags in front of it to start to shape that. But then we start to go into how to shape the reflections with the gradients, which we will talk about in yeah, some other episode. Uh, that could be yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, but, but yeah. The, the key thing is to remove everything and just put in one reflection and start to shape that. Yeah, and then do one reflection at a time. And so you can use the reflections to kind of create the shape of that many-sided irregular shaped thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And the bigger the light source, the smooth, the, 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 the bigger the penumbras, the, the shadow edges. Mm. And the shadow edges, that is all about subsurface. Yeah. That is the subsurface reflections. So if your glass piece uh, get enhanced by having s uh, small penumbras, small uh, shadow edges, then you should have small light sources. But then your reflections probably will look crappy because glass often seldom likes small uh, light sources because reflections becomes you know all greedy and just ugly uh, so please send me an email with a picture of that glass thing and i will answer you how to shoot it in the best way cool so i think we've been really nerdy into some detail we, we, we could have taken it even to one more level but thank god we did not uh, and uh, and you probably want to see this episode again just to uh, capture because we talked a lot and said a lot of things. 
Um, so, so I think w w I think that's about it for for this week's uh, nerd episode on reflection. Next week we will talk about something less nerdy and less uh, difficult. Maybe we we'll mix it up. Uh, you never know what the next next week's topic will be. Cause <laughs> <laughs> It has so a little bit of mood as well on what happens uh, uh, on what, what we want to talk about. But we promise you, uh, we'll be back next Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Uh, and and so, so with that, I, I'd like to uh, thank you all guys for being back. And uh, we'll uh, make sure we, we, we have a, a lot more fun uh, in the coming weeks uh, throughout I, this I, fall. I thought this was fun. This was fun, absolutely. Yeah, we will have a lot e of fun. Equally fun. Yeah, but uh, it's just that <laughs> what we think are fun might not be oh, fun yeah. for other people. Okay. That's the problem. That's true. Um, we have to so. differentiate our funness. Yeah. So uh, we have one last question from Khalid. Uh, we use CPL filters in automotive photography uh, to remove uh, glare reflections often from glass and sometimes glossy paint surfaces. Oh, that's a good tip. CPL filters. Yeah, polarizer, uh, circular polar, polarized yeah, so you filters, can, you of can course. Yeah, uh, turn them around. Uh, yeah, sorry we didn't mention that. Just using polarizing filters on the camera will, of course, remove reflections that are polarized. Reflections that aren't polarized, or they all are, but aren't uh, having the same polarization as your filter won't disappear. But it is a way to control a lot, a lot of uh, reflections. That's true. So here, here, most reflected product surfaces are shiny, and if we shoot and the cloth we wear also shine sometimes on the surface of the product. So at that time, uh, we have to shoot the product in black clothes or white clothes we wear. Well, so uh, exactly. That's why you see us quite often in black, uh, because we don't want to be new light sources and reflect into uh, any other surfaces. That's quite often that. Uh, why we wear black and also why Profoto's product uh, products are black and not yellow or white or any other color because uh, they do create uh, new reflections and uh, yeah. yeah when we shoot uh, well, when I shoot product photography let's say that I'm going to make a product photo out of this thing then maybe I have something to reflect light and I hold my hand like this just to see how the reflection turns out and my hand creates these hand hand colored reflections that is so ugly <laughs> so sometimes i wish i were black gloves <laughs> but i haven't gone so far but it's really ugly with colored reflections when they aren't supposed to be colored and hello andy and uh, fernando thank you so much for your uh, warm words uh, i'm so happy to hear that you're still learning and that's what we want to we want to share and, uh, and hopefully make everybody uh, able to create fantastic images and, and, and shoot. So uh, we keep on exploring the world of light. Yes, yes. we do. And we love your questions. Uh, like we for I forgot to talk about the polarizing filters. And thanks to a question from you, we got into yeah. that. So continue to comment and uh, ask us questions. That is the best thing. And we do actually read the comments uh, in, uh, uh, you know, on Facebook. So if you post questions, even if you don't watch it live, uh, we, we, we monitor these uh, episodes uh, and, and, and try to respond uh, directly in the feed uh, on the comments. So with that, guys, bye, David. Bye, Anders. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Good night and sleep tight. Yeah, we will. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>